All right, a very common problem. You got a car, first thing in the morning, runs a little rough, stalls out when you come to a stop, but once it warms up, it runs perfectly fine. So what do you do? Well, I'm gonna show you how you can fix it yourself. Always start with the simplest, most logical things. In this case, the air filter. It's dirty, and here's a really good trick. I mean, you can see it's dirty, that's obvious, but to show you the lack of flow, there's old Mr. Sun. Look, you can't even really see through this. You should see the sun shining through. For every gallon of gasoline you use, your car burns thousands and thousands of cubic feet of air. If the air doesn't flow right, your car often will run poorly, especially when cold. Now, a cold engine has to have everything absolutely perfect when it's running. Not enough air, not gonna run right. Not enough spark, it's not gonna run right. Once it warms up, it's kinda like people. Yeah, I'm getting kinda old. I wake up in the morning, I'm a little creaky, you know, but once I get going, I'm working pretty smooth. Your car's the same way. And the next thing you wanna check is the spark plugs. Now, especially in an older vehicle like this, which has 216,000 miles on it, you wanna check the spark plugs. They wear out over time. Checking them gives you a really good idea what the engine looks like inside. Now this has coil on plugs and the spark plugs are hiding under the ignition coil. So we just take out the coil, move it over here. You get a spark plug wrench and a socket, stick it inside, take the spark plug out. Out it comes, as you can see, the gap is worn. As they age, the gap gets wider and the spark doesn't work perfectly, especially when the engine's cold. All spark plugs wear over time, but they also give you a really good insight into what's happening to your car. In this case, it's a perfect color. There's hardly any oil burned carbon on it. So that says the cylinder's in good shape. Now we're gonna check them all when we change them all, of course, but we're gonna get spark plugs and an air filter and let's see what happens. So I got the new spark plugs. We'll take all the old ones out and we'll compare them. Perhaps one cylinder's messed up and another one well, isn't. You know, I mean, with the Hondas, they're all the same. We'll find out in a second. Here you can see the number two plug is about the same. I'll do it down in the shade where you can see it better. It's the right color. It's not particularly burning a lot of oil. Now here's number three plug. When I bring it in close, you can see it's the right color too. All those three cylinders are in excellent shape. And here's number four. And as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same as the other ones. The right color means the engine is in excellent shape. Now it might sound crazy, but with 200 something thousand miles, Honda engines typically do this, at least the older ones. This is an old 1.5. This isn't the modern 1.5 turbo GDI injection system. This is normal fuel injectors put out, maybe 50 PSI pressure, no turbo charging. That's how these engines last so long. Not insane horsepower. This particular one is 109 and the GDI ones are like 190, but you pay for that horsepower with less lifespan of the engine. Now while I was messing around, I noticed one thing. When I grabbed the air box, wiggle. It should be super tight. So we're gonna tighten it up so there's no air leaks. Now unfortunately, this car came from Pennsylvania. Got a lot of little rust on it. Can't use the Phillips screwdriver, that's long gone. So strangely enough, this has a five and a half millimeter socket on it. We're gonna go to where the socket is, right here, and we're gonna turn it so it's tight. And it's really loose. Let's let that baby squeak, but now, Look at this, it doesn't come off anymore. It's nice and tight. Well, it actually needs even more. There. Now you might think, what's that? Well, if you get an air leak, that's unbeatered air going into the engine, make it run a little bit too lean. Now it wasn't anything outrageous, because if it was, the spark plugs would have been bright white for running lean, and they weren't. So this is more gonna affect it when it's cold. Of course, what happens when stuff gets hot, it expands. So then it gets tighter and it doesn't leak anymore. So that could have been a big deal too. We'll put in the air filter. For some crazy reason, Honda has this at an angle. Well, the reason it is put the fat end down here because your top has a skinny end in the front and a fat end on the back then it just snaps right in with this pennsylvania rust it might be the spring steel shot on this one we'll try forcing it on but the steel doesn't have much flexibility left it's time for the giant screwdriver you push it in the middle try to pry it on we're almost there Ta -da! <laughs> now we're gonna start it up and see what happens because it's gotten a lot colder since we've been working here we go, 200,000 miles, listen to that engine. Now while we're at it, we're gonna check all the data with my scan tool. In particular, Nova's pretty good. We went through all the Honda OEM enhanced data and there are no DTCs. So now we're gonna look at live data. Really hard, live data, here we go. Now as we look at the data, we can see the short-term fuel, it's actually subtracting 8.6, but the long-term fuel, it's only subtracting 3.1. And this is kind of what I see in these older Hondas. When you're starting them up, the injectors are old, instead of spraying a perfect cone, they kind of spatter around. So they actually drip too much, leak, 
and they run a little bit too rich when they start so the computer's got to subtract fuel so there isn't too much but once it warms up as you can see the long-term fuel it's only subtracting three which isn't much for a car with 216,000 miles so once it warms up it runs okay so some good fuel injector cleaner like Chevron Techron we're gonna put it in a tank and then drive it a couple hundred miles because you need cleaner that has the PEA petroethylamine it's a nitrogen based cleaner all the good cleaners have it you're gonna use the cleaner make sure it says PEA and I'll probably find the fuel trims will drop closer to zero because that'll make the pintles spray better and they won't be dribbling which makes it run with too much gas you want to find mist not dribbles as it's warming up the short-term fuel trim is actually starting to drop a little bit it's going down showing that it works better when it's warmed up so if your car's not running right when it's cold but it runs okay when it's warmed up you know you can fix it yourself relatively easier if you use your head and a few simple hand tools and here's some bonus questions and answers. BMW E90 says, I got a 2018 Subaru Impreza. It spews white smoke at startup at 37,000. The dealership said it was water vapor, but my coolant level drops and I have to add coolant several times. The dealership said it evaporates due to open coolant reservoir. Don't listen to them, they're full of crap. They're just not admitting that with 37,000 miles, your vehicle is burning coolant. If it was leaking coolant, you'd see it dripping. You didn't say that, you don't see it dripping anywhere it's burning the coolant what are Subarus known for head gaskets that burn coolant Subaru doesn't want to cover any of that stuff because it costs a fortune to do correctly it is an engine problem that you have which is the reason I tell people I'm not a big fan of buying Subarus they've always had head gasket problems they've always as they aged burnt oil it's a shame but that's why I tell people I'm not a big Subaru fan and then they just lie to you it evaporates all I have to say is I got Toyota's that are 20 something years old they don't use any coolant and they got little reservoirs too and they don't empty out so that's a bunch of baloney you're adding coolant the only reason you're adding coolant is because the thing's burning it and that's why the smoke's coming out of it <laughs> it's totally logical plus you say it's burning half a quart of oil every 5,000 miles now that's not much oil burning and that isn't going to make it smoke or anything you're losing coolant and that's why it's smoking but even there you're burning half a quart of oil and you only got 37,000 miles shows you the quality of the engine build is not like in a Toyota or in a Honda Lucia Nomex says I just bought a Nissan Versa 2012 with automatic tranny four speeds at 85,000 miles should I ever replace the transmission fluid yes it's a Nissan they have Jatco transmissions they're notoriously weak I would change the transmission fluid religiously every 40,000 miles change it now before it's too late and then if the car does last unfortunately you bought a very poorly made car my daughter-in-law in Boston had one she said it was the worst car she ever had but you got it take care of it change it every 40,000 miles religiously and pray that it lasts baby it drive slower maybe it'll last a while hey you got it don't ever buy another one do change it now and change it every 40,000 miles if you want it to last Jadco transmissions are weak those are exceptionally weak you know it's a Versa it's kind of a slower economy car and if you drive slower that way it can still last a while so change it every 40,000 miles religiously and start right away Panhead 92 says about 2011 HHR in 2015 126,000 miles from a fleet shortly I removed the engine and put in a closed timing chain water pump complete head job I drove highway only I got 30 miles a gallon in an 80 mile an hour state of South Dakota now I got 170,000 miles it runs great I know you don't like them how long do you think it can last well I am amazed that you've had one that lasted that long but you put a cloy timing chain you did a complete head job you did a lot of engine work most Americans vehicle like that that kind of mod they're just going to junk the stupid thing you fix it so what the heck keep driving it and take care of it you obviously take care of your machines when they first made them and you bought a new one they didn't run all that bad the problem is the engine brakes they have problems with the transmissions you're taking care of it if you would have been some you knew no one and had to pay to have that work done it would have cost you a fortune that's why people think they're horrible vehicles but you have it so take care of it and drive it hey there's people in Canada that are still driving those crazy Yugos the Yugoslavian cars <laughs> And they take care of them they're still driving them out in the woods in northern Ontario so what the heck you can make things last if you really have to so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell